How you doing? This is Ivan with Bite Size Wisdom for Busy People, and I'm back with another quote of the day to have a great day. Today's quote is by George Bernard Shaw. The quote is, Life does not cease to be funny when people die any more than it ceases to be serious when people laugh. So today I want to touch on a few key ideas that this quote inspired. While in our bodies, we meet reality in a threefold way which is to say that we can only think, feel, and sense the world around us, and based on our own individual faculties and capacities, we'll perceive the world in our own unique way. Our lives from the moment we are born until we die is spent reacting to external stimuli. As we react to these external stimuli, we develop certain patterns and habits of thinking, feeling, and sensing. As time goes on, we increasingly become more conditioned. People, if they don't take their development into their own hands, will become set in their ways. So then when certain events and circumstances arrive, we act in very predictable ways. We see the world through the rose-colored glasses of the past. Our vision becomes narrower. We slowly zap the aliveness out of life. Life is always new, always changing. It is us who may perceive it otherwise. The goal with many spiritual methods is to help us become less identified with external and internal objects. The less identified we become, the more objectively we can see the world, free of many of our prejudices, our conditioning. We can see life in a more wholesome and comprehensive way. We can see joy and pain and pain and joy and be free of both. This is the essence of when Jesus said, I'm in this world, but not of it. You learn to take it all in stride. When our mind and body really become purified of its attachments to lower emotions, we then may start to perceive higher emotions that don't turn into its opposite as our common everyday emotions do. As people of the past would say, these are heavenly emotions, not of this worldly life. Schools of the past utilize certain and special methods to help their students see and break some of their unconscious identifications. For example, to help people with some of their attachments, one exercise was to consciously try to feel the opposite of what a common stimulus would normally initiate, something as basic as our reaction to the weather. Most people on a rainy, gloomy day will react in an unfavorable way. Students would then be trained to react in the opposite way, to be happy and uplifted on a rainy day. They would then be instructed to react in a sad way towards a bright and sunny day. Ultimately, the aim of many of these exercises was to break many unconscious identifications we have, to make the person a master of his emotional world, to show them that they don't need to be a slave to their mechanical reactions to the external world. As I mentioned, everyone while experiencing reality through their bodies will only be able to think, feel, and sense the reality making information all around us. That is, unless they begin to work on themselves, work on becoming more conscious. So what is it that comes into play if you can't think about, feel, or sense it? This is a fourth something, no thing, that begins to come into play. As there are no words and ways to adequately describe it, it is up to you to discover what that is. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's little quote. If you did, please help me out and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And don't keep me a secret. Share with anyone who may find my content valuable. I really appreciate you helping out my little YouTube channel. And wherever you are in the world. I hope you're doing well. And until next time, take care. Peace.